Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the Bex Creates podcast. My name is Bex and I'm coming to you from very grey and cloudy Bristol um, where I live with my fiancé Paul, um, yeah you heard that right, and our Norwegian forest cat we Fatta. Um, so it's been a really long time guys, a really long time. I'm so sorry it's taken me so long to uh, get back into uh, podcasting again. Um, but it has been very, very busy. So I went back to work. I went back in sort of middle to end of February, had a phase return, and now I've been back full time for six weeks. And it's been great. It's been lovely. It's gone really well. It's been very tiring, but it's been very, very full on. And I've literally come home from work and just eaten and then been flat out. I, they're just, you know, just too much going on in my head I've barely knit for the first oh, good month to six weeks that I was back at work I barely knit at all I had just no mojo I was just too tired which is very unlike me because I'm not one of those people who can't knit when they're tired um but I just I didn't really want to knit on much I have um I've been fairly monogamous so what I needed was just like fairly big projects that were really really simple which we'll see in a minute um, that I could just pick up and do one or two rows without thinking about it. So I've done a bit of that. Um, and then, yeah, obviously there's big news. Um, we got engaged last week. Eek, so exciting. Um, Paul proposed to me last Saturday, which was the first day of my half term, which was lovely. Um, and he also had the week off. So we've had a really nice week together celebrating with our friends and family and doing loads of nice things. We already had quite a lot of nice things planned, which is good. So it's been a really fun week, but very tiring. So today we're just having a really quiet day at home. Um, I've been doing some baking for our Jubilee street party tomorrow with our neighbours. And yeah, just generally chilling out. So I thought, right, if I don't get it done now, I'm never gonna do it. Cause I'll be back to work next week and then the summer term is always crazy and then it'd be summer holidays and we're actually getting married in the summer holidays um we're having a very small wedding in august so things are going to be busy so i thought right i better get on and do this now while i have the chance so i've got a few finished objects probably well definitely not all of the things i've finished since the last time i spoke to you but um some of them are probably good presents and i've just kind of lost track so I'll just show you what I've got. I've got a couple of new designs to show you. Um, I've got two, two works in progress at the moment. Um, like I said, I'm not really getting loads of knitting time, so I'm just keeping the, the whips down. Um, and then just like picking up blankets in between if I need anything else. And then I've got quite a few acquisitions because I've had some presents and things. So I will crack on and show you. So my first finished object is this beautiful wrap. Now it's not been blocked yet. I've not had the time and it's going to take a lot of space to block it. So this is the Adventuring Wrap by Amber O'Brien. She's got lots of um, advent type patterns. Um, and this, yeah, this is the Adventuring Wrap. So this was great because it was really long rows. There's a lot of stitches, but it was literally so easy to remember it once I sort of cast it on and did the first couple of colours I didn't need to look at the pattern again so this was just the thing I was looking for and this is made look how gorgeous it is it's made using my lay family yarn advent calendar from 2021 um which I just love because obviously it's a rainbow so it's just gorgeous I didn't use all of the colours because there were some greys at the end and it just looked so cheerful as a rainbow, I didn't feel like it needed the greys. And also, by that point, I was done. <laughs> I was ready to finish. So, But it's a really great shape because it's really long. And with a block, it'd be even better. And it just it snuggles up really nicely. It's going to be brilliant in the winter. Um, but also, it's quite it's fairly light because it's fingering weight and it's got the, the eye looks. It's not like uber hot and heavy so you could kind of sling it around the shoulders in the summer i guess but i just love it because i just think it's so cheerful when i was making it i considered giving it somebody's present but then i was like no i can't it's mine 
So yeah, that was a really lovely project. Um, my next project, I think this was the last thing I knit before I went back to work, um, and it actually came together really quickly. So this is yet another Whitmore cardigan. Actually, it's only the second cardigan I've knit. I've knit lots of Whitmore sweaters by Amy Loudon, so it's a bit creased, I haven't worn it. Um, and the yarn, goodness me, why can't I remember the yarn? It was so long ago. I think it was a Cascade. It's a DK, which is this lovely lilac -y colour. I just fancied making something like a pretty pastel for spring. I did the um, bishop sleeves, so then it's nice and roomy. The whole thing is probably slightly on the big side for me. Excuse me. Oh, sneezes. Excuse me. The whole thing is slightly too big for me, but it's nice. It's just quite slightly and comfortable. Um, and I've worn it quite a few times already. It's nice for work and things like that. Um, and I just love the colour. I think it's quite different to me, but um, I really like it. I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, really lovely. And the yarn is um, staying really nice. It's not pilling at all. I've worn it quite a few times now. So it's still looking pretty good. Um, I have also made a Clandon sweater um, after this one. But I made it in Claire and John's yarn and they wanted to take it to, gosh, what should we show with it? Wonderful, I think. Um, they wanted to take it with them and Claire was wearing it and she got so many com compliments and liked it so much that I had to give it to her. So she's got that one. So if you want to see it, pop over to Claire or John's Instagram or mine um, and you can, you can see it on there. Um, but I, you will see I do have one in progress for myself. So then um, I've been, the only socks I'm allowing myself to make this year are either for gifts or shorties for myself. I'm not allowed any other socks myself because I've got too many. But I do need shorties because we're going to the gym quite a lot now. Um, my hip recovery has been going really, really well. I've had a couple of small setbacks since going back to work. Um, just, you know, with the strain of being on my feet so much more. But it's getting really strong. So we're um, going to the gym a lot. We're swimming a lot. Um, and it's doing really well. So I need more um, shorty socks for the gym. So um, the first pair I've got is this pair. There are two, but I'll just... You know, I'll show you now to prove it. But I've only got one on the blocker. So this is a new design I, I released a couple of months ago called the Spring spring lace shorty sock um, and it's just a really nice simple pattern so it's um, mostly stocking it and then it's just got this really simple lace design down the outside of each foot so they are different um, and this yarn is so pretty it's one that Hannah um, sent to me my lovely friend Hannah from Yarnio Designs um, she sent it to me I think it was either just before, or just I think it was just before I had my surgery last year, and it's from um, London House Yarns, um, which is just so pretty, so my colours, and it it shows really how this pattern is really good on self striping. It, this pattern would actually work really well on pretty much any yarn, I think, because it's so simple, um, and it does really work well on this sort of um, self striping gradient sort of yarn so that one is available in my Ravelry store now it's the spring lace shorties and then my next finished object is another pattern um, which I literally just launched two days ago and these are called the lily bet socks and these are in honor of the platinum jubilee which is happening um, over here this weekend um, 70 years of Queen Elizabeth II so I thought we needed a little pattern in her honour. So again, shorties because I thought this time of year you want a, you don't really want a long sock, um, and it's got this really beautiful um, embroidery on glaze pattern down the front, which is lovely. It's really really easy to knit, very easy to memorise, and really fun to do, and looks really cool. They remind me of sort of little spring flowers as well. And the yarn that I use for these is from Jen at Castleview, Castleview Yarns. I can't talk today. And it is California Dreaming, 
Now, I've had this skein of yarn for ages. I can't even remember when I bought it, but I think Jen had some sort of sale on, so I finally treated myself to it. And then it's been sitting on my shelf for quite a long time because it felt really special. I loved it so much. I wanted to do it justice, and I think this pattern is just the thing for it. Look at all those colours. It's so pretty. So, yeah, again, this pattern does seem to work really well with a really busy yarn like this one but obviously would look really lovely with a semi-solid or a tonal as well. Um, and I've currently got a discount code for these ones, um, which is Platinum 50, um, but you need to get that done before midnight tomorrow, which is the 5th of June. Um, and don't forget also that there is always an ongoing podcast discount code um, on my Ravelry store, which is Podcast 20. Um, and so you can get 20% off any of my patterns all of the time to say thank you for watching these videos. And then finally, another pair of shorties that I made. So I have this really cool yarn. Hang on, let me see if I can grab it. I can just see it. So um, my friends Joe and Rach gave me this yarn and uh, it's really cool. I can't remember what the brand is called, but I know it's Australian. Um, and it's got all these different colours and it's kind of got the barber polling. It's, it's amazing. So I thought it would be really cool to do like a sort of a slip stitch kind of thing. Now, the contrast didn't work as well as I thought it would with this, um, this dark green that I had. But you can sort of see, it does look better in real life, that I've done like slip one, knit one, and then knit one, slip one, all the way down the foot. And then just striped it across the back. Um, so they were, quite, they were quite fun to do, but didn't quite come out as I would hope. But you can see that like they're different. And I think if you knit like two more socks out of this, they would come out completely different again. Because like every bit of the yarn is just random. It's really cool. So those were a little quick knit a while ago. So now, now I've podcast them, I can wear these, add these to co the collection, which is good because... At the moment, I'm barely wearing any long socks because it's warmer, but I'm going through shorties like nobody's business. Okay, so finally, my final finished object is this hat, which is so much fun. So this was the Simple Pleasures hat by Pearl Soho, which I knit before. And it's really good because basically you knit quite a long rib holding fingering weight double. And then you drop one strand and you pick up a strand of mohair for the main part. Um, so this is probably going to be a present for my goddaughter because she loves pink and she loves pretty things. Um, and I use, the yarn I used is so cool. This um, slub yarn is from lovely, lovely Rachel at Fly Dyed, who I met in person at the last flock, which was either the end of January or February. I can't remember exactly. Um, but... I saw this colour and I loved it and I thought I had to try the um, the slubby yarn as well. And then here I just held it double with a mohair that I already had, which is probably from Claire and John, I'm not sure. So it looked really cool and it was really fun to knit with to see like what colour bobbles were going to come along next and how, how the blue was going to work with it and things like that. And then the pom-pom is from Warehouse and it's a Trimits one and I think they're $1.99 set amazing value it's huge and really pretty and it um just ties on with a ribbon so it comes off nice and easy for washing so i think she's gonna love that one it's just so cute and fun <laughs> and wild you don't lose her in the playground with that on that's for sure okay so on to my works in progress now this work in progress you have actually seen before i think i've had it on the needles that long and i don't know why it's taking so I am knitting, I am knitting a pair of my after party socks in a shorty sock. Um, after party is a pattern from my Ravelry store, which is actually a free one. So um, if you haven't already downloaded that, go and, go and grab it. It's, it's a really nice pattern. It's really easy. It looks really cool on self-striping. Um, as you can see, it makes it sort of into this chevron shape. But it's ever so easy. It's only two, two rows. Really simple to memorise. So why is it taking me like five months to get on with these? I don't know what it is. 
So I am actually going to keep these out this afternoon and try and finish them off. The yarn is one from the Dotty Wool Company's Friends Club last year. I forget which month completely because like I say I've had them on the needle so long. But they are really cool, quite unexpected colours to get there. Um, yeah, so I really need to crack on and finish it and then I'll have four pairs of shorties that I can wear. But hey, doing this should spur me on now. I will um, I'll try and crack on with those this afternoon. Okie dokie, my next, um, next work in progress is my Camden sweater. So I was waiting for so long for this pattern to go out. Amy posted lots of spoilers and I was so excited for it because I love the Whitmore sweater so much. So it was nice to have something that I knew I would enjoy knitting. I knew would be a great pattern, um, but it was a bit different. So this is a picture of Amy's one, which is utterly gorgeous. So you, um, it's, you can either hold fingering weight double with a mohair or a surrey alpaca, or you can do it in DK. So the one I did for Claire was, it's actually the same as this, um, fingering and surrey alpaca, just because that is my preference. Um, mohair feels a little bit itchier and also makes a lot more mess knitting. Um, just gorgeous so it's nice it's quite nice and slouchy and actually what was good was when I knitted Claire's one I wasn't a hundred percent happy with the fit on me so I'm glad it fits her really nicely and she likes it because I could adapt the fit for myself on this one so what I've actually done on this one is I've gone up a size so I think my first one I knit size three and I think this one is a size no I knit the last one size four and this one's a size five and the instructions are brilliant. It's such a clear pattern. There are charted or written instructions. And I'm using the charted because it's really nice and easy. Um, so it doesn't look like I've done tons, but I am actually on to the third chart now. So you can see I've done the, um, the rib at the top and then I've started this really cool pattern. Um, the whole thing is on reverse stockinette so once you get down to the body you turn it inside out and knit 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 and then turn it back the right way so that you're not doing loads of pearls um but it's just gorgeous i love it already it's gonna be so nice it's gonna be nice under these dungarees um and the yarn is a new color that john has dyed called grace just the prettiest is like a minty green it's very similar to their chiffon color which is why they flares in but that one's slightly as yellower this is a much bluer green very pretty and the grace cloud which is the surrey alpaca so really really gorgeous love it so much so i'm slowly working my way through that obviously i probably won't wear it anytime soon because weather will be a bit warm so i'm just going to keep plugging away at it and um it'll be something nice to look forward to wearing in the autumn and winter but yeah it's really really cute um i do also have another blanket on the go but i forgot to bring it in with me but basically um the shawl that i made the wrap i made with the advent i got all of the leftover minis and just made them into a magic ball and i'm just making a little baby blanket for the um the present pile so yeah really sweet but it's in the other room there's not a lot to see yet really so there we go. Um, so now, future knitting. I've spotted this cardigan. I actually watched uh, The Grocery Girls the other day for the first time in ages. I mean, I'm not really getting a lot of chance to watch many podcasts at the moment. So um, I had a bit of time. So I watched The Grocery Girls and Jodie was wearing this cardigan and I saw it and I loved it. And I thought I'm going to have to make one of these. So this is a picture here. It's called the After the Storm Cardigan by Kelly Fowler. And it's just this lovely sort of slouchy relaxed fit cardigan but i don't think this picture does it enough justice because seeing jodie in it you could really see like it had really good shape in round here so it stayed nicely sort of closed when you're wearing it had like nice um a nice bit of room under here without like being too much like a back wing sleeve it was really cool um so i think it's knit in Sport weight, yes it is, it's knitting sport weight. So I turn to my new favourite yarn. Um, 
which is Stylecraft Recreate. Now this is great because it's recycled, so it is made from um, wool, acrylic and polyester, which is all recycled. So it's basically made from old clothes and recycled plastic bottles, which is really cool. And as a result, you get lots of little flecks of colour. It's just really nice and it's it's sold as a DK weight, but it is 350 metres to 100 grams. So it is more like a sport. Um, and it feels lovely. It's, it is really quite soft and bouncy and it blocks beautifully. It sort of puffs up a bit. So I have chosen this colour, which is ink. And then this one, which I believe the label's come off, but I believe it's Ecru. I can't find the label, that's it. Yes, Ecru. And I'm going to do the stripes in that colour. So hopefully it won't be too long before I can cast it on, but who knows. But I just thought that would be really cool and really wearable item. I wear a lot of cardigans to work because... I can be like when I'm getting ready in the morning it's quite chilly but then as soon as I start hair in my Natasha and setting everything up I get boiling so I need something I can get on and off nice and quick so that is that's just going to be perfect so I'm really excited to cast that on. Talking of the style craft we create I've also got this um I've got a sweater quantity of this sky colour mainly because I liked it and I did think I, I might make myself another clander so it's not a mohair one um, in this. So that would be one, but that would be quite far down the list, I think, because I've got a lot else to do with not very much time to do it in. Um, so I feel like I'm racing through this, so a bit out of practice. So I've got quite a few um, acquisitions to show you. And the first one is sort of an acquisition and a finished object, and they're not all here. So. I ordered, let me find it, I ordered one of these um, necklace kits, crochet necklace kits from um, lovely Emma who is um, stitching me softly and I've, I've got lots of her necklaces, um, she does lots of different styles, she does one that's a multi-way one that you can tie in different ways which I love and I wear that one quite often but she brought out some new colours in her crochet necklaces and I had to have them for spring. So I've got two of them here, but I've, I've been wearing the third one already, so um, I'm not sure where it is. But here we go. So we had this minty green, this gorgeous sort of Parma violet colour, and then also a uh, real blush pink. And they're great. It probably took me, le well, probably 40, 45 minutes to make all three. Um, and they're really fun make and they just look really nice. I should have one on now really because it would go really nicely with this outfit. Um, they make great presents. I've given quite a few away. Um, and she does kit. So you can buy the kit with the instruction to make it and the hook and the um, bobbiny thread. Um, but then she also just does sort of the refill. So if you've had the kit before, you've already got the instructions and the hooks, you can just buy the, the refills and the thread. So they are really cool really nice um and you can have one in every color to go in every outfit so i thoroughly recommend okay now i've been really really lucky because um in january claire and john started their um bird street yarn i forget the name of it it's a club uh top of the pops club i want to say i might be wrong though anyway Claire um, very kindly, what well, she told me that she was going to save one of each one for me for my birthday, which is in November. But then a few months back, she decided to, to give me the first quarter's worth um, so that if I want to start a big project, I could get it started. So I got all of these. So I'm not entirely sure what order they go in. I'm pretty sure it's something like this. I think Club Tropicana came first. Oh my goodness, so my colours. Gorgeous. And then, I know this one was February because it was kind of Valentine's Day. This is Eternal Flame. One of my favourite songs. And you can get them into a fade. So they're really pretty. And then there is Don't Stop Believing. 
another one of my favourite songs. And then this one is O Vienna. Really moody and dark. They're really cool. So I think I will be making a nice big blanket with all of these. I'm so excited. I'm so lucky. Um, so they're beautiful. And then, um, gosh, when was it? Going back a few months ago, um, Amy at uh, Dandelion and Dogwood did um, a special sale to raise money for Ukraine. So um, she did loads of discounts and was giving some, if not all, of her profits to Ukraine. So um, I bought this skein, and I've never had any Dandelion and Dogwood before, so it was a real treat. This game caught my eye mainly because it's called The Marvellous Mrs. Maisel and I absolutely love that series. If you haven't watched it on Prime, go, go watch it. It's so lovely. The costumes are cool. It's so glamorous and really funny. So yes, just this lovely creamy colour with like splashes of pastels and then a, a deeper red. And then they were also doing um, like mystery mini bundles as well. So I got these ones. I just loved. I mean, if you're going to get a mystery yarns and you end up with that, you're going to be happy, aren't you? And actually, it goes really nicely with the main skein that I bought. Whether they did that on purpose, I don't know, but it would make quite a cool shawl or something, or a cowl or something all together. So, yeah, I don't know what they'll become, but I love them. Those are on gold sparkle as well, so they're really pretty. So, yeah, that was quite an exciting purchase. I think they're all on 80-20 socks and they're really bouncy and squishy as well. Um, and then in, gosh, when was it? February, Claire and John went to Unravel. They did the weekend at Unravel. And their store was next to a new dyer that we'd not come across before called Bona Yarns. Um, I believe his name is Dan, but I beg for you on that. Um, and Claire said he was such a lovely guy and his yarns were so cool and funky that she had to pick me something up. So she got me this really wicked bright skein called Sweet. Would you look at those speckles? And that pink is just glowing. So that is cool. That will probably have to become some really, really funky socks or something. They make nice shorty socks. They'd be fun for the gym. So that was lovely. And then finally, this is a very boring one to show you, but also very cool so my lovely lovely friend Suzanne from Green Lampkin Yarns has started her advent club so you can buy an advent calendar from her in installments of three skeins at a time over eight months and it's um it's really affordable then it really breaks it up so I've got the first few months worth of those ready and uh they're so they're being packed away to save for December when I shall thoroughly enjoy opening those. Um, so yeah, so uh, this is good. This is this feels like it's beginning to give me my mojo back properly now of doing a podcast. I've been itching to do it for so so long, um, but life just gets in the way. I've realised how privileged I was having so much time when I was, especially when I had recovered quite a lot. I was able to you know spend a lot of time knitting and spend a lot of time going to the gym and seeing friends and family and stuff because now everything's just so manic all the time you know work all day and then come home and sort the house out and all the rest of it so but it's all good it's all good it's really nice to be back to normal and feeling good and feeling fit and healthy so I'm very grateful so yeah um I don't know when I'll be back. The next few months are going to be pretty busy. Not with wedding planning because it's going to be tiny and we've pretty much planned it. All I have to do is choose a dress and we're good to go. Um, but just with the regular sort of summer term craziness, school fairs and, and end of term dues and all sorts of things. So it's going to be busy. But I will try and come back when I next have a decent amount of stuff to show you. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll just remind you again of those um, discounts in my Ravelry store so you can always use Podcast 20 for 20% off and this weekend you can use 
platinum 50 for 50% 50 off of the lily bed socks so do go over and check those out even if you just um have a little look at the page and give them a like it, it all helps um but it's been lovely to be back and i will hopefully see you